So let us discuss the definition of continuity of a scalar field. Already the definition of continuity we have seen for a real valued function in first year of BSc, right? So see, we are going to extend that concept for a scalar field. So let us start. So what we do, we consider let S be subset of Rn, okay, which is non-empty. That means what we are doing, we are taking one subset of Rn, which is non-empty. I will draw the diagram sim simultaneously so we can easily understand. Getting so suppose this is a subset of Rn, non-empty subset of Rn. After that, what we do, we take one arbitrary point, okay. We are taking any point A of S and we have a scalar field also. What is meaning of scalar field? What is meaning of scalar field? It is a function from S to R. So actually F is a function, getting F is a function from where to where? S to R set of real numbers, right? So see, when we say F is continuous at A, so I will clearly mention uh, here, F is continuous at a belongs to s so when we say f is continuous at a if 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 limit extends to a f of x see this limit should exist you are getting that this limit should exist and it should be equal to f of a so that means what is f of a f of a is an image of a under f okay so see when this limit exists as well as that limit is nothing but the value of f of a then we can declare function is continuous at a getting my point okay so see uh, there is one more definition we call it as epsilon delta definition so what is that definition this definition is same as which you have already studied for a real valued function okay real valued that means r to r function hmm. see that definition is for given epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero, such that, such that norm x minus a less than delta implies mod f of x minus f of a less than epsilon. So you have already seen this type of definition in first year, right? Just the difference is that time we had taken mod there. Okay. So why we, uh, we were taking mod and now we are taking norm because that functions from R to R. But here uh, for a scalar valued, the domain is a subset of R and co-domain is a subset of R. So that's why here we take a norm and here we take a mod. So you can make a screenshot of it and after that we'll go for a one example. Okay, please. Okay, so in this example, we have an example, we have a function and we have to discuss the function is continuous at 0, 0 or not. Okay, so see this is definition of f. Okay, and it is 0 otherwise that means when x, y is equal to 0, 0, we have f of x, y is 0. So I will clearly mention here f of 0, 0 is equal to 0, 0. See what I am going to do, I am going to take a help of epsilon delta definition. So in case of epsilon delta definition, initially we take some epsilon and we try to find a delta in terms of epsilon or any fixed delta which will work, which will satisfy the definition. Okay. So let us start with one epsilon. So let, I am taking let epsilon greater than 0 be given. Okay. So I am taking any arbitrary epsilon. Now, and uh, what we have to do, I will mention here, we have to find what we have to do, we have to find delta greater than zero, right? Such that, such that, which will satisfy this condition. The condition is norm x, y minus zero, zero less than delta implies mod f of x, y minus f of zero, zero less than epsilon, okay? That means uh, we have to select delta and our choice should satisfy, choice of delta should satisfy this condition, okay? So let us try to find out the value of this mod and after that we will decide which delta we have to take. So consider, I'm starting with that mod f of x, y minus f of 0, 0, right? So mod f of x, y, yes, this definition of f of x, y, let us use it here. So x, y, x square minus y square divided by 
x square plus y square f of 0 0 yes f of 0 0 is 0 so simply i will put there so minus 0 but you know that when you subtract 0 from any number so you will have a same number so that's why x y x square minus y square upon x square plus y square so do you know that thing that means when we have a numerator denominator and when we take a mod easily we can take separate separate mod so what what will i do i will take a mod of numerator and i will take mod of denominator so here mod x mod y mod x square minus y square divided by so here we have to take mod of denominator also but see in case of denominator we have a x square y square square cannot be negative getting now so that's why there are no chances of getting these negative numbers at denominator so those are always greater than or equal to zero or greater than zero okay so see x square plus y square simply have you right since square we have cannot be negative so let us go further let us go further so this is equal to mod x mod y a small adjustment i am going to do that adjustment is see i am expressing in this way x square plus minus y square okay denominator is same have you understood what you have done i have simply adjusted that minus sign i have written plus sign there and i have taken minus sign inside okay so there is uh, one uh, property of mod that is mod a plus b less than or equal to mod a plus mod b that means when we wish to take separate separate mods so that time there are chances of uh, getting uh, increased value getting so that's why when you take a separate separate mod so you will have less than or equal to mod x mod y and mod x square plus mod minus y square divided by x square plus y square because of this result this is equal to mod x mod y see uh, square is there cannot be negative so there is no uh, use of mod simply i write x square there is minus sign outside i know minus sign outside but because of mod it will get cancelled and y square cannot be negative so that's why here i am writing y square in denominator i will not change anything okay x square plus y square so tell me can we cancel anything yeah obviously that x square plus y square x square plus y square we can easily cancel and therefore we get finally it is equal to mod x into mod y so therefore what is our conclusion we started with uh, this one right so we started with this stuff therefore mod f of x y minus f of 0 0 and we stop here and we got inequality also mod x plus mod y i will call it as inequality first okay see now we choose now we choose now our task is to select the value of delta but still we don't know which delta we have to select really we don't know so what will i do i will skip this step okay i will keep as it is and i will go further after solving two steps we will come to know which delta we have to select okay and accordingly we will write that thing there so let us start with okay we solved this part now i am going to solve this part okay so let us consider so consider consider norm x y minus 0 0 okay so see uh, we are considering this is less than delta okay this is less than delta actually uh, you have to make a screenshot of it and after that we will go further please okay let us continue so implies implies see you know how to do subtraction there so both are elements of r2 so we'll have norm x y less than delta since component wise subtraction x minus 0 x y minus 0 y so after that we will uh, use the definition of norm and we will find its value so this is by definition it is square root of x square plus y square less than delta to remove that square root i will take square of both sides so we'll have x square plus y square less than delta square can you guess the next step since in each and every example we are doing the same so that's why in previous uh, last two or three videos we have we are done the same thing so tell me what we have to do after this so see sum of this two is less than delta square so individually we can say the first term is also less than delta square and the second term is also less than delta square so implies we get x square less than delta square and y square is also less than delta square okay so see uh, after that we will take a square root of both sides but obviously we will take a positive square root so it is mod because of if square root is positive mod x 
and mod y so actually or okay see here also we have got mod x into mod y so that means uh, by keeping that thing in my mind okay i wrote all these steps according to that uh, term we have to adjust some few terms here so implies we take a product there right now so here also i will take product so mod x into mod y less than delta into delta delta square see so therefore therefore okay therefore bar from from 1 we get from 1 we get what we get from 1 mod f of x y minus f of 0 0 this is less than or equal to we have got mod x mod y and here now just now we proved that mod x mod y is less than delta square right but our target is to prove that this is less than epsilon so my choice of delta should be root epsilon you are getting m choice of delta is root epsilon so let us put delta is equal to root epsilon so root epsilon square so square and square root will get cancelled and we get epsilon okay i will remove this part huh, since we have used it now okay just a minute we have also taken already screenshot of it okay 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 see i remove that part so therefore we conclude that okay therefore 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 we conclude see we started with this step therefore norm xy minus 0 0 less than delta implies and finally we get finally we get mod f of xy minus f of 0 0 less than epsilon so that means epsilon delta definition is satisfied therefore we can declare given f is continuous at 0 0 so therefore f is continuous at 0 0 so in this way we finish the example make a screenshot of it and write your notes thank you bye